What is the plan at Tottenham right now? Because we've seen since Maurizio Pochettino, when, when we had Pochettino, it seemed like there was a clear plan in place from the beginning of Poch right and up, well, not right up until the end, but up until it all started going wrong. We had a plan. We had a plan of a project manager, young players in and, um, and building something for the future. We had a clear, a clear vision in place. Marie, Maurizio Pochettino called for that rebuild. He got sacked. They bring in Jose Mourinho to apparently win now without backing him. That's no plan in place there. Sacked him four days before a cup final. Uh, waited 70 days or something to bring in Nuno. <laughs> <laughs> to bring in Nuno, yeah. yeah. To bring in Nuno. <laughs> Nuno comes in. He's gone within a couple of months. Um, and then they bring in Conte straight away. Conte is notoriously a win-now manager. But what we're hearing from the club is that we want young players to come in. We want the same vision as we hand under Mauricio Pochettino, but we want to use that for Antonio Conte. Antonio Conte's plans and methods are to win now. Bring in players that are ready to come into the team right now, not like Jed Spence, but like a Richarlison, like a Perisic. Fair enough, they brought in those players. But his philosophy is to come in, get the players he needs and win now. So do the club actually have a plan? Because the noise coming out from the club saying we want a project, a project, we want a project manager, we want a project players to come in, young players, not, um, not to spend too much on them in terms of wages, in terms of transfer fees and, um, and build something. But Conte wants to bring in players that are ready made to come in now and, and, um, and to win, go for a title challenge this season, next season, whenever it may be. So what is the actual plan at Tottenham right now? Who do I honestly have no idea. I don't know. I don't know if there's, as, as we've been hearing, you know, apparently there's, there's, um, there's a split in the board, whether what they want. Do they want to back Conte? Do they want to bring someone else? Do they, are they fearful of the backlash of the fans? And that's why maybe they're sticking with Conte until it, it becomes untenable. Um, are they really believing they're giving Conte the right tools to try and get, or give a title challenge? And are, do they believe maybe Conte's, um, when with his messages recently, is he spitting the toys out of the pram? What the plan at Tottenham right now is muddled, and we're seeing that right now on the pitch. We're seeing that that lack of cl clarity play out. I don't think there is um, a uh, there's a harmony between the board and the management where they're <laughs> both on the same page. Clearly, there's not even harmony within the board. Never mind with the board and the management. So I don't know what what at the moment. Conte doesn't want to sign because he wants assurances he'll be backed. Tottenham don't want to back Conte because they want assurances he's going to sign. And it's leading to this cycle where like, it's like a game of chicken where and probably everyone's going to lose. Um, and at the moment, I don't see a clear plan. I don't see foresight. I see a muddled strategy where you're just we're just jumping from one crisis to the next and basically what happens is we stave off crisis with um, a new manager where we go, he, his methods come in and then it's okay for a while until it starts to go bad and then we bid him off for a new another another thing and I feel like with the whole Pochettino yeah there was a plan but I feel I kind of feel like we fell into that plan because we did fall into that because plan. when we hired Pochettino. I don't think the board were like, okay, he's going to bring through Kane and he's going to bring through all these players. You know what I mean? Well, let's be honest. Like when we, had we, when we, brought, we well, Yeah, I get that. But when we brought in Pochettino, he wasn't our first choice. Our first choice, if you remember, was Louis van Gaal. Yeah. Imagine we got Louis van Gaal. Is he a project manager? Is he going to be the manager for the next five years and do what Pochettino did? No, the board got completely lucky with Pochettino. But when Pochettino came in, there was a plan. It seemed as though there was a plan in place after he came in and he was the one that maybe came up with that plan and, and um, that's what I'm saying. It seemed as made the plan to fruition. Exactly. I'm, I'm saying it seemed as though the, the, the Tottenham fell into the plan with Pochettino. Pochettino seemed to bring on, um, uh, bring, uh, what's his name? Bring on Kane. Like we had, we had no idea how good Kane was going to be. Sherwood knew. Like, like we started that season with Adebayor and Soldado as our strikers. We started that season with Yunus Kabul as our centre back. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, um, we, he, uh, he, we didn't start the season. Uh, Dembele was, uh, going nowhere. Like we, we, Pochettino came and he fixed all these issues. He got these young, he trained up these young players, got them playing in this really high pressing system, which suffocated opposition players. It was young, it was vibrant, very reminiscent of what we're seeing right now up the road. And we had that plan, it worked so well. 
But the difference between what we do, what we did then, and what Arsenal are doing now is every is every season now Arsenal are fully backing um, Arteta. They're giving him money to spend. They're 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 giving him not just not just like Lorentes and and these players. They're giving him Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko. They're giving him f- 40, 50 million on on per player to go and actually improve the team. Whereas they're basically we were basically doing it our, right. Basically, they're yeah, doing we, it right. We were asking Pochettino to always turn water into wine and continue doing that. And when when he could when and when when um and when basically he can no longer t- keep turning water into wine and he actually need proper investment again we decided actually we decided no the problem was to sack him and 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 try and get a manager who can get more out of the squad now rather than just keep Pochettino and and ride out the storm and and keep backing him and so he can reinvigorate the squad with new players because uh, he was at Tottenham for five years Rem it's a long time in current um, modern day football and so I feel like ever since we sacked Pochettino we've been just going from manager to manager not knowing really what we're doing kind of pissing in the wind I feel manager to manager philosophy to philosophy um, it's just a complete mess. We've been pissing in the wind. We yeah. don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when you when have we, we ever known what we're doing? Let's be honest. That's the thing. I feel like we had we did under Poch. We we had a clear plan, and they w- they didn't realise what a good thing they had. That they just let it go like they did. And it, I, I, people say, oh, it's easy hindsight. Twenty twenty. I realised the final days of Pochettino were not good, and it's similar to what we're seeing, you know now or you know under you know un- maybe some days under Mourinho the final day to watch the football was bad um we were getting outrun but that wasn't totally his fault he had to you had to give him a chance to rectify you got to remember right Pochettino got top four in four consecutive seasons he got fifth uh fifth third second third fourth right and then we started the season badly. So he didn't even get a chance to finish that season. He got sacked after 12 games uh, of that season. And who we kn- saw him have bad starts before when we, you know. So who knows what would have happened if he would have stayed till the end of the season. Maybe, could have, maybe we could have turned it around second half of the season and with, the invest- with some right but investment to be honest, whatever. To be honest, Poch looked like he, he had done with that, with the project, because he got no support from the board whatsoever. And he, was, he, he seemed like a dead man. You know what I mean? He didn't seem into the project anymore. Right, but the, whose fault is that? We know whose fault that. Exactly. And that's the hierarchy's fault. But I'm saying, and it's the same thing under every single manager. How many managers are going to tell Daniel Levy the same thing? It goes the same way every single time. It took five years to do it under Poch, and then it went to uh, Jose Mourinho. It took eighteen months to uh, to crumble. Nuno, it took um, a few months to crumble, and now Conte has taken a year to crumble. It well, hasn't crumbled just yet, but it's starting to definitely. Yeah, I you're seeing. You're, it's, 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 it's the it's same signs. It's the same signs as we've seen under every other manager. Yeah, and it's hard to get away from that fact right now. It, the things are definitely seem to be going wrong on on the pitch. There's no doubt about it. But the, the, I don't think this board seem to know what they're doing when it comes to um, having a vision and implementing it. Um, they when they appointed Conte back in November, right? They, he stabilised the club. He somehow got that squad to top four, even though it was, you know, um, maybe not as difficult as this year to get top four. He still did a, a miraculous job, in my opinion, to drag that squad to top four. Good, smart investment. Used it well. Um, had a really good late run in the season, and we snatched that fourth place, which is the dream for this for this board. But they haven't. They didn't rectified the main issues in the squad in the summer they did some good signings but they didn't rectify exactly what we needed and now we're in a situation where Conte needs major investment to make his system work and we're questioning whether we're going to give it to him so what why are we questioning whether we're going to give it to him do we not believe in him do we do, do I know we're worried that he's not going to stick around but you appointed him and Either you completely have full confidence in your manager that you appointed, or you're always you're always going to be on a hiding to nothing. But it's the same thing with every single manager. It's not about where they believe in Conte, where they believe in Jose Mourinho, where they believe in Mauricio Pochettino. I mean, if if Poch showed what he, I mean, if any manager shows what they do at a club like Maurizio did at Spurs and still doesn't get the backing, mm-hmm. then who's going to get the backing? 
You know what I mean? They bring in Jose Mourinho, who obviously needs backing under a, a failed um, a Maurizio Pochettino after that project went dead. Every single manager has need backing in the same areas that Conte does right now, mm -hmm. and they haven't given it to him. The defence. Since Toby and Jan have gone off the ball, we haven't had a proper defence. Since Carl Walker and Trippier left the club, we haven't had a proper right back. You know what I mean? It's the same issues every time. Since Danny Rose has left, uh, have we had a competent left back to come into this squad? Since Dembele has had, we had a competent midfield. I mean, it's the same problems over and over again with every single manager. And at what point are the hierarchy going to take um, culpability for this? Are they going to keep sacking managers and keep going for a manager bounce and then it ultimately goes bad until they start backing a manager? When are they going to put their money in their pocket? Or when are they going to sort out the problems in this squad? It's been way too long. These last four years or three years, however it's been since Maurizio has left the club, has been a complete waste of time. Every manager has needed the backing and none of them have got it. On the flip side... Uh, if you're playing devil's advocate, I've seen on Twitter, you know, people arguing, um, whatever you want to say on the hierarchy and uh, their, la their investment and or lack of investment. You look at the team that was out yesterday, um, you know, you had Romero, a back three of Romero, Longley, Davis. You had midfield where they had Perisic, Hoybier, Basuma, Doherty. You had obviously the front three of Hill, Kane and Son. Should that team be putting in a better performance than we saw yesterday? Is that team capable of more than what we saw yesterday? Should they be playing better football? Um, is it and and should are we are is is this team not massive? Is this team not underperforming? If it is underperforming, why is is that is that the board's fault that the t this team is underperforming or is this where the the squad is at in terms of uh, um, in terms of how they can perform and if it is underforming is that not on Conte's head look like I said uh, before in the match review there's no one that walks away from this problem without blame Conte takes the blame the players take the blame but ultimately the number one blame does lie with the hierarchy for not giving the manager the tools that he needs consistently time and time again yes we had a team on the pitch yesterday that could have done better that could have played better that could have got the result but ultimately it always is going to go the same way if you don't keep investing and keep refreshing the squad. And that's just the facts of the matter. You have to um, keep moving forward. Otherwise, they're ultimately going to move backwards. And that's what you're seeing under every single manager. Yes, he can get maybe a new manager bounce uh, when we're playing one game a week as well and no European football to contend with. He can get us playing good football. But when, when you're asking him to play two games a week, when you're asking him to play Champions League football and Premier League football, and, and on top of that with the injuries that we've got already, then unfortunately you're going to see these results, you're going to see these performances, and you're going to see uh, what you're seeing right now, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's the reality. Well, and that's the thing at the moment um, with the, this uncomfortable relationship. The, it seems that the, 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 the two, the management and the board level, have put themselves in, and they they have ha they've had to surely had no no foresight whatsoever to have not seen this coming. If if uh, when when they appointed Conte back in November, and if if they really didn't um, want to back him, they should have just gone their separate ways in the summer with Champions League and, and rebuilt with a different manager maybe appointed Poch then but right now it seems as though they're not sure what to do There's, there seems to be a lot of uncertainty and obviously that's filtering through to the fans that was starting to show yesterday with Daniel Levy get out of our club the chance from, from, from the um, uh, from the fans uh, in the stands yesterday and the more these performances continue I think he's the one who's going to take the brunt of um, the criticism from the and fans. Right, so. and, I, and I agree with it, honestly, because I'm sick and tired of continue these, uh, these problems. Just It's like Groundhog Day. Every time, it keeps happening. And they're not willing to... There's no manager, it seems, they're willing to really commit to. It's like they were happy to go along with Poch as long as he was getting them top four. But like, let's be honest, where, the investment he really had was so minimal. Like, for, apart from obviously that his final season where he got in Don Bele and La Celso and, and they sacked, him a, and they sacked him a few months later. Like, uh, um, in fact, did he even get a chance to play them that much? Probably not, because they were, I think they were injured early on. Well, Ndombele scored in his debut, didn't he? Uh, but look, Poch was sacked within three months of that season. Right, so he barely got a chance to play them. Um, the, what was the investment he really had during his time? 
like so, like really minimal um, investment um, during his five years, and he was, and he was like just as I said, he was doing so well with the with the little money he was given, and when that when that kind of stopped happening, the, the board turned on him then didn't back him. And it's had, like a perennial problem with this board. He made 27 signings at Tottenham Pochettino. He had Hyung Min Son, Toby Alderweireld, Deli Ali, Eric Dyer, Kieran Trippier, Ben Davis, Lucas Moura, Musa Sissoko, Victor Wanyama, Fernando Lorente, Ryan Sessegnon, Kevin Vimmer, Paolo Gazaniga, Sanchez Foyth, Vorm, Paolo Lopez, DeAndre Yedlin, Undombele, Aurier, Jack Clark. Nkudu, Fazio, Vincent Janssen, Stambouli, and Clinton and G. So out of all of them, the only real two players that real made an impact on our team was Son and Alderweireld. That was it. Mm, yeah, pretty much. It's like, how are you supposed to make a project with, with that sort of impact from the boardroom, that sort of impact from the signings? It's like, how? Obviously, you're always going to go one way. Look at Arsenal right now with um, the same sort of project, the same philosophy. Look at the signings they're making. Every single the signing they're making at the moment is pretty much making an impact in their first team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that goes to show the lack of direction and, and foresight from this football club. And it continues a continual problem. It continues to happen. And... The worry is, the worry thing is, it clearly seems to be happening again. We've seen, it's something we've seen all before. And... Unless we have an incredible January, we're going to be starting a new project in the summer. And do the fans have patience for yet another project? Because it means probably more years uh, outside the top four, probably not finishing Champions League, more years without a trophy. Um, and we have to have even more patience to get this squad together to be in a position um, to fight for big things. Also, not to even mention... If Conte does leave in the summer, where does that leave Harry Kane? Is he going to be running Come. down his contract? Where does that leave even people like Son? Is he going to think, look, my time's running out of the top. Uh, do I want to stay? At, do I want to leave it? Tottenham Romero is a World Cup winner. How long before he starts to have his head turned? And Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky, um, you know, he's been playing so well for us. So it puts a lot of things up in the air if Conte leaves and, and this this team will need a really hard reset with a lot of fresh young players. And not even... Go, not even touching on the fact that if Pochettino say does come back do do a 30 year old Kane and Son even work in that kind of system anymore that's a, it's a big question it's a big question mark yeah and what what, what we do like we we ha like if you look at the top teams very few of them at the moment have a, an old front line they maybe have one like um like Madrid, for example, had like Benzema, but he's he's backed by two very quick, fast wingers, like who are relentless at the moment. Like look at Arsenal, very quick young front line. Um, you know Liverpool, they've got Salah who's thirty, but then backed up by some young, vibrant forwards, Dar Nunes and Jota and Diaz, like who are relentless right now. And Tottenham at the moment seem to be carrying, not carrying, but. When we try to press high, I think it doesn't help when we have two aging forwards right now who don't have it in them at the moment to be so relentless. Uh, and that's an uncomfortable question that we need to deal with as well. And without Conte, if we do try to move to a new project, where does that leave them? Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. I firmly believe that the, the future of Harry Kane is very much linked to the future of Antonio Conte so and I finally believe that Conte is going to walk at the end of the season so I think you're seeing probably the last two years now max of Harry Kane uh, he's five five goals away from Jimmy Greaves's record as well and we all said or I said that once he breaks Jimmy Greaves's record and Spurs are still not in a good way he will look to leave there's no two ways about it and um, I feel like if Poch is going to come back it is it is going to be um, a rip-down job. It is going to be a rip-down job because if you get rid of Kane and then Son ultimately wants to leave, he's um, on um, going into his 30s, you need to sign a whole new defence, pretty much, apart from Romero. You need to sign two players that can um, bring you the goals that Kane and Son bring you, which is pretty much a next-to-impossible task. <laughs> It's, 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 a, it's a project where you probably don't look at top four for the next two seasons. And I find it funny as well when, like, 
people think about or people complaining about Conte and stuff and on on online and on Twitter and stuff and saying, you know, um, you can't tell me that if you know we got a new manager we we could be playing better football and stuff. It's like you you try and put this. Let's say we brought in Pochettino tomorrow. You put that defence in a high line. You see how they do. You see how how we would get absolutely ripped apart if we put. Conte uh, put, put, put this in a Pochettino yeah. system and, and let's be honest Davis was a backup for Poch he didn't want to play him consistently mm -hmm. uh, Dyer uh, fell out of uh, favour under Poch as well he didn't want to use him consistently so we're still using these same players that fell out of favour four or five years ago mm -hmm. four or five years ago which is crazy yeah and then I'm trying to be our main players so I don't, I don't know what the plan is at Tottenham I honestly don't know what I think for me, the best course of action if I was aboard, completely back Conte, convince him, do your best to convince him to sign on. And that's the only way of doing that is making sure that he has the tools to compete. Sign the players that are right for his system. And that's the best be best way to move forward right now. And they talk about... Uh, our... It's going to cost them more money if they go for a new project. Yeah, it will do. And they're talking about our, uh, the philosophy of the club is to buy young players and... Um, and um, bring them through and so we have a longevity and all this kind of stuff if that is the case then why did you come out and say we want to win now under jose Mourinho? why did you bring in antonio conte what did through he the say, door what did he say in all or nothing i'm a Spurs fan it's now time for us to win trophies that's what he said and they're all or nothing so, so all of a sudden every they want a new year project. they want to they want to change their philosophy they are confused it's in the because, boardroom i tell you why it's because they look at arsenal Right now, they're looking, oh, look, they've got Saka, they've got Martinelli, they've got Odegaard, um, they've got, uh, you know, they've got, they've got Saliba, they've got Gabriel. They're thinking, oh, those guys didn't cost Arsenal so much. Why can't we do that? Well, let's split up, up. We don't need to spend They did so much do money. that. They did do that, but then they didn't kick on. They didn't. Exactly. Arsenal have still spent 400 million in the last uh, three or four years, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. They backed Arteta to the maximum that they could. You can't say that they did that for Spurs under any manager. And the funny thing is, um, let's say we bring in Pochettino and he has a first season like Arteta did will this board have the patience to stick with him? Maybe probably not they probably wouldn't no. let's, what you think the board if we're finishing 8th are going to stick with Poch? No chance no chance no chance and I and you have to commend Arsenal for uh, for, for sticking with Arteta through those tough times because I think I honestly any top six manager would have sacked Arteta under those conditions let's be honest mm -hmm. finishing 8th like that yeah. and after the back of a eight for four that any top six manager is sacking him and, and they stuck out with top him. four as well to us last game yeah of the season. and they stuck with him they stuck with the project they had the foresight to see that they were onto a good thing and they were sticking with their philosophy and now they're reaping the rewards but this this um management that we're under now um will never do that we've shown it time and time again the first sign of trouble and the manager goes and they have no foresight to stick with, with stick with a plan. And it's all well and good. You can say, oh, they did it under Poch. But it was never going wrong under Poch. There was never any any uh, cracks in, in uh, up until they sacked him, pretty much. But let's be honest, when they sacked him, it was pretty much the first sign of trouble. Yeah, I mean, the year that we got to the Champions League final, yeah, we got top four. But we had a, we hadn't, had, didn't have the greatest season in the league, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, but they were never going to sack him for finishing yeah. top four, were no, they? No, it's true, yeah. Never going to sack him for finishing top four. So literally the first sign of maybe a, of, of the first crack in the armour where it looked like we might not finish top four, sacked. Gone. Yeah, it's true. That's the reality. It's true. Um, pretty much same with Mourinho. I mean, I know we finished, he didn't finish top four first season, but second season, as soon as it looked like we weren't going to finish top four, gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, well, it was like they they sacked him because he wanted to rest players in the league when we still had a chance of top four when we literally had a cup final in four days' mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. That that just shows you that just shows you where the attitude is in the boardroom. They don't care about bringing in trophies. I mean, maybe they do care about bringing in trophies, but it's all secondary. It's all secondary to how much money they can make. And that's what it comes down to. Money, money, money. And that's bringing in money, not spending money. And ultimately, that is always what it's going to come down to under this hierarchy. Winning trophies and what's on that pitch is all secondary to them. As long as they can finish in that top four every season, we're they don't care the about anything possible. else. They don't care about anything else. And... And that's the predicament we find ourselves in at the moment. I don't know where this all leads. I mean, logically, it leads to a disaster where Conte goes and uh, we, we, we on, we're we probably on the end of a start of another project in the end of the season, which in a, in a in, I guess in the best case scenario is probably a Pochettino, but who knows? 
really. He might have found a job by then. We don't really know. Uh, a lot can happen in six months if, if we don't. I you guarantee know. you now, Levy or, or someone is on the phone to Poch being like, all right, this is all going to go horribly wrong. Uh, he's probably going to go in the summer. You know, do you want, do you want the job? And I, I think Poch is desperate to come back. I don't know why, but I think he's desperate to come back. But how mad is it in... Um Considering if you think about how much time has gone, in the end of next season, it will be 10 years since we appointed Pochettino. Yeah, it's nuts. And Poch is pretty much going to be walking into the same club that he left. No trophies, um, struggling to make the top four, um, a depressed fan base, ownership still not backing the manager. And how long have we been in the stadium now? We've been Three years. 2019. Since Poch left. Yeah. Poch put us into this stadium, right? Mm -hmm. We've been in the stadium. That they told us this stadium is going to be a game changer for us. We were going to compete and compete for the top, compete with the best clubs. Trophies are going to start coming. We're going to start backing every manager. It's a joke. It's a joke. Like, how are they telling us now that we don't have any money to spend? How are they telling us that? Like, where? Like, how? How? What are the excuses that they can tell us that they've got no money? Oh, the pandemic. The pandemic was ages ago now. We've moved into the stadium. We're getting all the revenues. We are surpassing Arsenal in terms of uh, the amount of revenue we're bringing into this club. We're having Guns N' Roses, Anthony Joshua, Lady Gaga performing at our stadium. Uh, we've got Champions League football. They told us if we don't make Champions League football, there's no chance we can sign anyone. And now... We are in a January where there's still the same holes in the squad that we had four years ago. And they're, still, and they're telling us, what would Paul O'Keefe say the other day? 30 million. We've got 30 million to spend plus player sales. When Arsenal, um, who haven't been in the Champions League for what, five, six years now? Since 2017. Since 2017. Coming up to six years. They haven't been in the Champions League all this time. And they're spending 400 million to back Arteta. And we're, and we're surpassing them on revenue bring, bring, bring brought into this club. The whole thing is a shambles. It's a mm -hmm. complete shambles. And this hierarchy um, are the ones, like, you can blame Conte all you want. You can blame the players that we have on that pitch all you want. But it is always going to go back to them. And until they start backing a manager, it's always going to go back to them. And that's just the, the facts of the matter. Mm -hmm. And unless they take culpability of what they are doing, unless they come out... And, and tell us what the plan is, what, what they have in mind, then like, even if they do come out and tell us a plan and what they have in mind, like Daniel Levy has done in the past, it's all bollocks. Look, and it's clearly subject to change within a couple, a month or two. Well, let's be honest, he, what do you say? He will bring going to bring back the Spurs DNA, all good football, then he brings that these uh, points Nuno. So they had no idea what they were doing. He was just he was just throwing things out there that sounds nice. That were just PR. It's anything, all anything to to calm down the fan base a little bit. Basically. Anything to save a little bit of face. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting it's it's just getting too much now. I mean, like I I I think I think we were both in agreement with this that when we brought in Conte. We would, we would uh, chill out with the hierarchy a bit. We wouldn't say Enoch out, Levy out, all this kind of stuff. Let's see how it goes. But unfortunately, it's going in all in the same way. This is their last chance, this January, to put the money on the table and say, Conte, here, here are the players that you want. Here's your right wing back. Here's your centre backs. Here's your creative midfielder. Not one creative. We've got Kulusevski and Harry Kane, the only creative players in this whole squad. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane's been asked to play as a forward, um, not dropping deep too much anymore. So that, um, you know, alleviates a creative player. And Kulusevski's injured at the moment. So that's why against Villa, we had no sort of creativity whatsoever on that pitch. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane, it took 20 minutes for him to get a touch on the ball because he was uh, going up front and not dropping deep into the midfield. There is no creativity. And how the hell are you supposed to move forward as a football club when you've got these gaping holes that you refuse to fix? Refuse to fix. Now, all right, we'll just give Dyer a new contract. We don't need a new centre-back. You know, just stick Ben Davis there, left-back. You know, Conte, you've made him a good player. You know, why, why do you need to replace him? We've got Christian Romero. We've got Stockback and Clement Longley. What, what, what more do you want? Mm -hmm. You know? While Chelsea are out there signing uh, players like there's no tomorrow. You really think we're not going to fall further and further behind? Mm -hmm. Of course we are. And that is only one person to blame. Well, a group of people to blame, and that is our board. For not having that, the for, you don't even need the foresight. All you need to do is, is see what's happening on that pitch. See what the fans are saying. See what every other club in the Premier League are saying. See what every other club in the Premier League are doing. 
It's yeah. a joke. It's an absolute joke. And, and you, then, think, you think about the top six team, like if uh, if Chelsea had two attackers out, they could still field a very good front three. Mm -hmm. Like like Chelsea, even United, if they had two forward players out, they could still um, put in a very good front three. Man City the same, but one for us, you take out any two players, put make them. You take out any two players out of our forward line, and we're struggling all of a sudden. Every any any of them because the number four, the, the next strike on the list is Hill, and that just goes uh, comparing our lack of depth to the rest of the top six, and that is. Um, Exactly where we are forget, at the moment. Forget depth, though. Look at uh, player for player starting 11s, for instance, in in the uh, against the top six. Starting, look at the defence. None of our right wing backs get into any uh, team in the top six. Probably none of our left backs get into the, any uh, team in the top six. And apart from Kuti Romero and our goalkeeper, no, not even Loris probably doesn't even get into any teams in the top six. Davis, Dyer, Longley. Um, don't get and Davidson Sanchez don't get into any teams in the top six. Mm -hmm. Romero, out of that whole back line, is the only one that can probably get into a team in the top six. The only one. That's reality. And P, yeah, and people asking why we're so defensive. It's like we're trying our hardest to protect this team, this this back line right now. It's uh, it's just I'm at a loss as to where we're headed because at the beginning of the season, you know, in in the summer, you're thinking, look, Conte's here. We, we, you know, we look. Hopefully, after six weeks of the window, we look like we're going to give him money to spend. We're going to back him. We're going to go in his direction. But a I window think, like we've never seen before, unprecedented. I think that I think it all started to go wrong in the last six weeks of that window. That's where it all started to go wrong. I think people, when we didn't sign anyone, um, there were a lot of frustrated fans, but people were willing to kind of look over it a bit just because we did have a good first six weeks. But I think we should have realised at that point that we actually didn't invest, we, you know, at the beginning of the window, we wanted a right wing back to, to come into the team and a centre back. We didn't, we, we, well, we didn't, got a right wing back. Yeah, it's we, not exactly. one that manager can we, use. We, we didn't get, we didn't have, invest heavily in either of those positions. And basically. like, I don't get it, right? Because like, if Conte's telling the board that he needs a right wing back, that he did, um, do they not talk? Does Conte not, talk to Paratici does he not talk to Levy being like all right we're gonna get you this uh, Jed Spence if you need a right wing back so much mm -hmm. do they not talk and like being like and Conte being like no I don't want to use him I don't understand it like how can you have discussions about bringing players in in the summer and you end up with Jed Spence a player that a manager doesn't want to use how does that make sense and then, and then we're and then they're giving it the big talk about a left centre-back we're going to spend 50 million Romero money they said on a left centre-back and we end up with Longley on loan and yeah. I, look I don't think Longley's a terrible player but when you're talking about a major upgrade he just isn't that yeah. he's, he's probably he's on just, a similar level to Davis yeah. like at the moment anyway you know, um, he went from we went from Bastoni uh, to Longley on loan a player who's struggling for form at Barcelona like we the, those are the two major holes and then we didn't and then we were talking about okay we're supposed to looking at another forward we end up we end up looking at dan james on loan on deadline day you know what i mean what the hell is that about yeah. yes we got richarlison of 60 million fine and that's good but that's just a starting point that's not an ending point yeah. that's something to build on it's not like okay we got richarlison that, that, that's it it feels like because richarlison apart from spence was the last signing right it feels like it felt like um they were like all right we signed richarlison for 60 million what more do you want <laughs> so yeah. like, what more do you want we're signing Richarlison for 60 million a player that doesn't get into the first team anyway <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss of where we're headed that's the problem at the moment and this I'm January is last chance saloon literally to keep some because we can still turn this around we really can still turn this around if we listen to Antonio and his needs and what he needs and bring in those players that he needs not players that he needs in a position like Jed Spence just to bring him in and fill a hole no, you need to listen to exactly what he needs. If you want to change the philosophy after he comes to the club, then you're not going to go anywhere at this. You're not going to go anywhere. This club is not going to go anywhere. And if you think you're going to get, he, he's just going to wave, wave a wand and we're going to finish in the top four this year and you get your Champions League revenue money, you better think again because that ain't going to happen this season. He can't repeat what he did last season without investment. He can't do it. And it's not even that he needs that much. He needs like two or three players good quality players and we're in a good position yeah but right now we're just we're just very short and and, let, and to be honest that's all you need when you got when you got opposition teams investing heavily improving all the time getting you know um getting their act together 
it doesn't you don't need to be short that much to make a big difference but we are mm. and that's the reality and look all lies on the board this january 100 percent. and i think um i think it's the frustration is the messages we're hearing the what we're hearing um through the grapevine about not a lot of money to spend and what kind of players we're looking at in in, in january and looking to invest in that's the that's the problem we're hearing um and also the time is obviously going to take compared to other teams make like why i don't understand like why we've gone into january and we're not ahead of the game why are we not already after targets and have people lined up like other other teams seem to right now we we, we have had conte now for over a year we should be all on the same page about where we're heading what we're needing what we're going for and yet it just seems as though um we don't know what we're doing we're not sure if we're backing him or not we're not sure um what kind of player we're going for we're not we're not 100 percent convinced whether to invest the money or not and that's unacceptable that's unacceptable yeah absolutely spot on so the question was is what is the plan at tottenham and your guess is as good as mine <laughs> nobody <laughs> bloody knows what the plan is at tottenham let but us know in the comments what yeah. is the plan at tottenham i want to know yeah i'd Maybe love to know. know and uh let us know who you think uh the most culpable people are at the club is it the hierarchy like we think or do you think antonio conte um should take more of the brunt of this uh but let us know in the comments section below yeah.